Cool. We... We're recording. Awesome. Welcome all. Welcome to uh, Helio Working Group for February 29th. Um, it's actually it's my mother-in-law's birthday. Happy birthday, Marion. Um, <laughs> uh, she's like 15 today, my mother-in-law. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so we've got some items on the agenda. Let me share my screen. Uh, I think I clicked that. So we've got some items. Feel free to add that. Can somebody share that in the chat? Um, and yeah, just, just some stuff to chat about. We chatted a little bit about the Helia Service Worker Gateway already. We'll dive into that a little bit more. But then if there's some other things that come up, um, then we can, you know, hopefully chat about it after as usual. So first thing first, I mean, just to call out that, you know, somebody sub reported a bug that um, they found 15 broken links on Helia.io. So we will be um, kind of checking into that, making sure um, that that works. But, you know, ETH Denver is going on right now. So I think um, we might not get to that till next week. Uh, I haven't verified that those links are actually broken. They said they they ran some like Docker image that checks links on a website. Um, a bigger item of importance, I think, is this uh, replacing the DAG walkers in in Helia uh, with the uh, multi format block interface dot links function and. Um, it may be less performant than the DAG walkers. Alex has like fine details there, but I thought it was worth discussing among like, so we, so we can understand the goal. Like, do we, do we plan on doing this no matter what, because it gives us more generalized supportive codex or is this something where like, if it's not very performant, like we're going to maintain DAG walkers going forward. And the thing about the, the existing DAG walkers is we have to maintain a DAG walker for every supported codec, which is really tedious um, and obviously not very future proof. Whereas the the blocks, or the links, the block, sorry, the links function on the block, multi formats block, um, just transforms the, the block into a into the, uh, the IPL data model. So an object in JavaScript parlance. And then just walks every property and says, are you a CID? Um, which means it does a lot of work. It doesn't have to, but it yeah. means that we don't have to maintain everything in the future. So is that, can, do you think we, we have any chance to, to modify that links function to like, like yeah, change the option? Just, yeah. just PR. Yeah. yeah. So, so is that, is that, that's in the realm of possibility. So like if optimal path would be less, less things to maintain that are Helios specific, i.e. the DAG walkers. And then um, like updating that links function to resolve any potential like a performance or optimization that we can do. Yeah, I mean, so the, the, the links function uses codecs. So if we had to, you know, and it uses the codec to turn the block into a, an IPLD data model object. Um, and then walks the properties. So if, the, if we, for example, added uh, a function to like an optional function to the codex that could just return all the links in a given block. Then you could you could do it without serializing uh, deserializing it first, for example. So we could totally optimize it if we needed. To. Cool, awesome, awesome. And then yeah, determining like what the performance hit is for this switch will determine like how how hard we need to go at go at those optimizations. Probably exactly. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Any any questions? Are there other comments on on that? Um, I just I mainly wanted to understand like like future goal. So I think I'm good with that. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Um, there's this PR that Daniel has out for the like recognizing. I don't know if you guys can see the little video screen here, or you can see this full browser tab, but. Hopefully you can see the full. Um, but yeah, so explicit support for subdomain gateways. So in in Helia um, block brokers, we 
um, use the like trustless gateway spec to fetch blocks from trustless gateways. And if that trustless gateway, and, and we do it via a path, and if that trustless gateway supports um, subdomains, it is frequently redirecting to the subdomain to retrieve that content. And that results in multiple requests to us. And this, this PR aims to sort of solve that, right? Um, and so, yeah, we need some path forward, but I think there's, there's like a chance for a spec improvement, like this protocol return from the delegated routing. I was looking at the comments here and like, do, do we want to specify more for this protocol, whether the, the IPFS gateway HTTP like supports subdomain requests or is that not, is that not, it's make not sense? something that will happen realistically. <laughs> Uh, the way this works is um, okay. So this protocol only states that uh, the on that TCP port on that port there's a like HTTP service following the gateway spec. There's no uh, distinct co uh, codec for a specific type of gateway. We have an IP for um, ability to send an options request to learn about capabilities of a gateway. So let's uh, put it more like on practical terms. You learn about a, a, a gateway through delegated routing. And then before you start using that gateway, you make a test. Uh, is this what type of gateway it is? Can I use it? And um, Right now, you need to do some like a creative test. Is it like a subdomain or not? Uh, there's an IPIP which suggests uh, the gateway should tell you what it is. I think that's the gist. Uh, but we don't have If that you yet. don't send an options request, though, like options is, is just supposed to tell you what methods that you can use for a given resource. Like if you request the resource and you get a redirect header, you get like a location header back. You well, like if you request uh, a resource, you either get a location header or you get the resource. So you you save the like making a request for every single resource for some of the time. Oh, it's um, I'm in this. This is like specifically add add headers to options response. So the gateway itself, the HTTP endpoint tells you what it is, um, but we don't have it. It's uh, just a draft of a proposal. And we still, is, even if, just, if it's a, yeah. You can, my point is that you can, you can just, you can discover what kind of gateway it is just by making the request that you want and yeah. then looking at the response. And then some of the time it will work and some of the time you have to make another request. Whereas if you do options, you're always making two requests. Uh, yes. <sighs> So yes and no. Uh, the idea was that the browser does options anyway when you do like cross origin request. So the the pre flight request is all already sent, and uh, the request for this IP came from IPFS Chromium project where they like, implement things on the lower level, and it's still stuck in a draft for the very reason you said. It's kind of like solves the problem for them, but for the case when you just have a JS making request, you don't have access to the pre-flight uh, options request that browser already did. You are not able to like learn from the browser. Uh, the request happened, but you are, don't have access to that. Um, so yeah, and in uh, practical terms, I don't think we, like even if this thing would work for us, we would still have a bunch of gateways which are not up to date, don't implement this. So. We, I'd rather have a, a smarter heuristic just learning uh, about the gateway after we make a, a first request and not do the path request to the subdomain gateways, I guess. Mm -hmm. that, that was my ask. Not, but, I mean, like we yeah. can hard code them. The gist is like we can hard code them, but we should not. We should have a heuristic which yeah. works for, with uh, any ho host name, not just hard coded one. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if, if we do make the request and we see that it's that it's redirected, um, like we can cache that in these trustless gate in the um, trustless gateway block broker to to say like, hey, 
like try the subdomain because this one seems to support it. Right? Is that isn't, the path isn't, we want? Isn't the um, perceived wisdom that you should just use the path gateway and let the gateway redirect you because you don't necessarily know that the CID you're using can fit in a domain or is not case sensitive. So yep. like you just use, you don't like, you just let the gateway redirect to you if it, if it wants. I, like, I'm not sure I under, quite understand the. What, yeah, so what so you you the problem. You're right. Well, yeah. let's just let me just recap the problem here mm -hmm. real quick. So like in in like in using Helio verified batch and then like pulling other content using these new trustless gateway block brokers, what we saw was um, the gateways that we have set by default support um, subdomains. And so they were redirecting the subdomains and we were doing like multiple requests for every single block we requested. So so we want to resolve that problem and like have smarter heuristics for that. And that's that's a problem. And then Lido, you can go ahead to respond. Okay, got it, got it. I think yeah, so the, you should just use yeah, the trustless gateway thing and receive a car and then you only have to make one request and then this kind of goes away, All right? Uh, it's the same problem. You get redirected to a subdomain. Yeah, but, but you're not doing one it request. per block. You only do one. You only get a redirect once, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you get the car with all of the blocks in it. Yeah, yeah. And I think we have a page with hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, instead of having like multiple requests per asset on a page, you make one. But you still have like hundreds mm -hmm. of assets on a page, and you make hundreds of redirects. So it's still the same yeah, problem. Yeah, sure. But then, uh, okay. But then again, again, to my point is that you would still just put it in the path because you don't know that all of the assets in the page necessarily have a CID that fits in a subdomain. So you kind of have to let the server do the redirect for you or tell you that it's going to redirect if it's going to do that. So this yeah. PR is actually just about making, when you're instantiating these block brokers, like a gateway block broker, you explicitly say, if you know that it is a subdomain resolution, um, you just flag it that way. Um, I mean, I, I think there's two discussions here. Like one is whether we want to have that made explicit. And then there's the other one about cars and, you know, doing, a, you know, retrievals per, per DAG rather than per block. Um, and then there's the other one, which is like, oh, do we want to make that explicit or do we want the actual, this library to the, the block broker to figure it out on its own? Um, I don't know. I'm of the opinion that if you know for, um, if you know for sure that uh, you're going to work with a gateway that is subdomain, why do you need to actually test it for whether it's a subdomain or not? Yeah. It's also I... a smart client, right? So the thing that Alan described is mainly you have a CID, you don't understand what that case sensitivity is a thing. You don't understand the DNS labels have li length limits. You don't even know what... Uh, IPNS key it was, uh, that's uh, what companion does. When you enter IPNS or IPFS colon slash slash and identifier, it will route you to the path and delegate all the CID normalization to the gateway. But the thing is like what we describe here is a smart client, which knows the details of the CID. It knows that, oh, this CID will fit in a domain name, right? So. If I know that it will fit and I can cache information that this is a subdomain gateway, uh, we should not like make a request to an endpoint which would redirect because we know it will get normalized anyway. And we can do that upfront and skip that one request. So that's like one conversation. The second one is like, should we maybe like the, to time box this, right? It's, uh, should, is it okay to merge hard coded list of well known gate, subdomain gateways right now and then add a smarter characteristic later or do we want to block on having smarter characteristic is that correct understanding daniel where we are with this pr yeah 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 so like the latter okay, part is okay. like do we want this pr to do the whole uh smart detection if you don't explicitly set it that's i guess the question here i mean well, that's one yeah. question the second question is do we want to have this option in the first place yeah. to to explicitly set it yeah, well, if if we're not, so like two-way doors versus one-way doors, right? If we're not sure that this is something we're going to keep forever, 
does, like, do we want to do it as a breaking change that we then have to like do another breaking change to undo? Um, and I think, Oh, this is yeah. no longer a breaking change, by the way. Oh, okay. Let me, Sorry. Just... I haven't uh, updated it, but like Alex gave a tip for how to non-break it. Sweet. Um, okay. Well, cool. Yeah. Then, I mean, if it's, if it's a two way door, then yeah, I think it's, it's, um, like it's something we can definitely go forward with. I know with the delegated routing, like finding um, peers via libp2p that support this, like it'll be IP address, which you can't really do like subdomains on, but we need to keep that in, in mind too. Like what, what like they might return a multi-adder um, in the providers that has an actual DNS adder. It's not always IP addresses, definitely mm -hmm. not. And certainly the when you're using the delegated HTTP routers to do the same lookup, e.g. no, no lib P2B, just an HTTP request, you quite frequently get DNS addresses back. Cool. Okay. There's also yeah, an interesting so... point there as well, because like when you do that request and you don't get any information other than they are an HTTP gateway. So you would have to have the heuristic at that point. And you yeah, kind so of have kind to do of, something. You want to do those lookups because you don't want to have a hard coded list of gateways because they tend to get blocked and then everyone's applications break and then we have to do releases and it becomes very tedious. So for now, though, it sounds like we we like we would be okay with with kind of moving forward with um, this non breaking change where we can explicitly okay. say for the the gateways that users want to use what it supports. And then we can do heuristics in the future. So we should file an issue for like um, handling that. Cool. Sweet. Um, anything else we want to chat about here before we move on? Okay. Cool. Well, cool. Um, yeah. So the Helia verified fetch um, accepting the, what was, what was the one I had? Oh, DNS resolvers. So the DNS resolvers, um, was moved to the first argument of create verified fetch. Uh, by the way, Helia verified fetch uh, was was released as v1. Thanks, Alex. Um, so that's cool. Go ahead and use that if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and yeah, oh, there's also an issue for moving moving that to the root. Uh, but I can't see. Okay. It's linked to in the readme. The main repo readme. Okay. You scroll down to the module. Here, okay. Cool. okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Oh. Oh, you moved interop test to inter verified fetch interop too. Awesome. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, but we have uh, DNS resolvers now. Uh, which is in this first argument. And what that means is you can't use a custom Helia instance if like, so for Helia service worker gateway is where this comes up, the item I wanted to talk about. Um, and so we wanna use custom DNS resolvers. Um, I mean, we should we should change the defaults here to, to support the ENS resolution. So that's an item, but um, uh, we can't then pass both DNS resolvers, custom gateways and routers and block stores because we're getting the Helia instance that verified fetch is instantiating for us. So my question now is, um, do we want to add the um, like support accepting block store data store in the second argument where we currently do content type parser um, so that we can like using, using an IDB data store in the Helia service worker gateway makes um, some things better um, just with caching and, and loading of content. I think that would be useful for us, but also like, do we want to even get in that space? I think there's something with the, the requests are not being cached at the service worker properly or like with the, the trustless gateway requests. If when I request content with the Helio service worker gateway, like, um uh no. let's see oh i didn't do https oh no well that's why yeah 
and my Okay, so yeah, like if like I already requested this and we can see that like it's disable cache was enabled, but if I remove the disable cache, we can see that there's still um, a number of requests that were not cached. So it looks like most of them are now though. So I don't know what was, these are like browser plugins and stuff. Okay. But I think Never it's mind. different so, yeah. the HTTP cache to the uh, request not even going to the browser if you have yeah. the block locally. Exactly. Yeah, it would it would not even fetch with the trustless gateway. So I guess is it is it worth supporting like stores as an extra parameter to verify fetch so that we're not even like going to the browser to check the cache. It could be useful and go either way, I guess. Oh, yeah, the original kind of idea with all this was that you would just use the verified fetch function. And if you wanted anything custom like this at all, then you're passing a custom, like a, a self configured Helio node in, right? Yeah. The, like, the I think main... going down the, the route of like accepting some of the arguments but not others is kind of. Uh, it feels wonky. In the long run. I know the 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 this comes up though with the because Helia verified fetch is like instantiating a Helia IPNS under the hood, and that receives the DNS resolvers. Like if you pass a custom Helia, you still have no like access to that inner like IPNS. So like there's like between the content type parser DNS resolvers and the stores you know, and whether you have a custom Helia or not, there's like this weird sort of um, edge case, weird edge cases. So, I mean, maybe we can wait to just hear from users how they how they handle it and we can stick with the memory data store, like the default data stores for now. See if users come up, but I feel like like for service worker gateway, it, it's definitely like an odd place to be. But I, I agree. We don't want to get in the the like, um, yeah. We want pre verified fetch to be to be easy. There is the singleton and the other methods. Like if people want to want to just like fetch content using the defaults, and that's great. But yeah, we don't. There is a slight concern in that um, maybe like not for the service worker gateway use case, but for people just using verified fetch directly on their apps. The storage budget for origin is shared across all JavaScripts that are running on that page. So if we introduce a data store there and we start effectively storing a cached copy of all the blocks, that will eat up the storage quota, the free storage quota that browser gives to the user. And that may be a feature or it may be a bug. So that's yeah probably something that we want to, if we do that, we may want to have a configuration option to disable it because I, I think it's do a we feature do for black people. hole storage. We could do black hole storage. So it's not increasing the storage and then the browser is caching all those requests. So I, I was under the impression that is how it works right now that we don't have a store at all. And we that's why we see those requests for the blocks and we leverage the cache in the browser and not eat the like local storage or whatever the data store we would be using otherwise. Right? It's, it's yeah. a feature in that you can uh, use verified fetch. Uh, you leverage the cache, uh, HTTP cache that already exists in a browser for all those blocks, mm -hmm. but you don't eat uh, the free budget that you have, right? Because there is an option to request like unlimited storage. Uh, but that requires user interaction. And this is a nice way of us uh, sidestepping that problem. How long is that browser cache kept for? Because these are all immutable, these all have the immutable uh, Should... header for the cache, right? Cache control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like immutable cached forever. Like the yeah. blocks can be kept forever. 
the only nuance here is that um, if we make the retrievals kind of like smarter and we start fetching from multiple trustless gateways at the same time, uh, we may start fetching the same blocks again because we owe oh, it's cached, but it's cached under a different origin. So, you know, that can be like worked around by just keeping the pointers that, oh, I have this block under this. I retrieved that block before from this uh, origin. I should make request to that. Even though that gateway is offline right now, I know it's cached wow. in the browser. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah. Well, these blocks that's, that's these cool. blocks under the hood, like the ones that we see here in this network tab where, where it's going to the, the back end. I don't know if that's big enough for you guys, but where it's going to the back end, like trustless gateway block broker, like though these are only spawned after requesting like um some like global.css and then this hits the service worker and then the service worker calls through to Helia and the trustless gateway block brokers to fetch the other content. So like I'm I don't know if there's something in verified fetch we need to change where we shouldn't even see these if this one is cached. Like if global.css is cached in the service worker, like we shouldn't see the block requests for that global.css. You you need to like explicitly add the item to the cache if you are doing that with service worker. By default, service workers do not leverage a uh, browser's cache for the response that service worker returns. At least it was when I looked at it years ago. So you need yeah. to, like, we, yeah, we can add that manually, like explicitly okay. put the response to the browser cache and that way those like sub requests will not be executed again. Sweet, and that'll solve our problem. And then we can, we can, um... Yeah, we'll need to, I don't know, like a black hole. We could remove the storage, you know, JavaScript storage space problem you brought up, Lytle, by doing like a black hole um, store where it doesn't actually save anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we will be like leveraging the uh, top level uh, response for and just cache it in the browser and that's it. Cool. Is somebody taking notes on that? I'm taking notes on one screen here. Um, Somebody can do that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I can feel an issue for this specific thing, just so we don't forget. Okay, appreciate it. Um, okay, great. Yeah, I think I think so. Not accepting stores and then just uh, doing that would be great. Um, Okay, yeah, we need to fix that. Um, block session support. Um, any any updates here, Alex? Are you just waiting on a review? Um, I know there was another PR. I think I approved that one. Or I, no, I still need to look more. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the yeah the bits will test for fighting. Um, so I just need to tweak yeah. it up. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know there was some hamped work and other stuff we were focused on uh, to get ready for East Denver, so no worries. Um, cool. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about with that? We've talked about that in some previous sessions. I think we should be good. Okay. Um, there's that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm confused about the, the on progress events, um, in the network storage where I was trying, when I was trying to con confirm via like on progress events that we were only, um, doing, you know, the work necessary. And I was checking via on progress events. I was trying to look for the get related to this block store put, and I feel like it like not having a get and a put with the same like prefix key space is confusing to me. I don't know if others feel similar, but can you explain real quick why this is a blocks get providers get, Alex? I think it's because we're like the providers are the block providers that we're asked that we're getting from, right? Yeah, there's this here. 
Yeah, do we need to just move this one? Because I feel like I saw a lot of these blocks get providers get, but then only one blocks get block store get. I don't know if we need to change well, you that. See the just... thing that's, you see the thing that's following it, right? So after the progress event for providers get, we race the block providers and the block retrievers. Yep. That's why it's called that. And then the other one, after the block store put, okay, well, that one now, after the block store get, we get from the block store. Okay, yeah. Just, just block, belt, block retrievers uh, are called maybe. providers. So the, um, I think the, the names of the thing has changed over time. <laughs> Because they were block brokers, and then the block brokers were split into uh, retrievers, and I can't remember what the other one was. Retrievers was, and providers, yeah. They had like single issue interfaces. Yeah, I don't think this is a big concern, but just something I wanted to bring up is like when I was looking at the on progress events, it was slightly confusing to like follow what was happening from the on progress events. But yeah, we don't need to chat about that too much. Yeah, so in 398, we go back to just having uh, block brokers rather than splitting them all into different things because we're adding a third method, a third optional method to the block broker interface. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. it should become a bit more. Uh, Cool. Forward. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I can let me close this one. Um, service worker gateway question, Daniel. Yeah, I'm gonna take those offline. We can do it async. Okay. Um, Lytle had this epic that he filed for uh, productionizing the Helios service worker gateway, um, which is a great sort of like set of different things we want to do with the Helia Service Worker Gateway. Um, we've got a lot of these done, so that's that's great. Um, but still some fleshing out we need to do. Lytle's video is off, so I don't know if he's around. Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I just put it uh, in case folks are uh, one like one-stop shop to see where we are. It probably will grow, because as we implement things, we, we find new bugs and also it, some bugs that we found show that we need to figure out how to wire up gateway conformance tests that we run against Kubo and Rainbow gateways to to like service worker one. Uh, I have like some technical ideas because we can leverage debug mode in Chromium and um, and a browser extension and companion uh, daemon which just exposes HTTP. It's I think it's technically doable. Uh, maybe there are some like tools that already exist for this thing, but I feel we will be finding more and more elaborate bugs until we, we have the uh, conformance test set up in the repo. So uh, we we may want to like fix those two um, from the minimal feature set because that impacts like a lot of websites. Uh, but after that, we probably uh, want to pivot to wiring up the conformance. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the last of the agenda items. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about before we before we go? Take that as a no, uh, Daniel. 
Yeah, so there's one thing which I was wondering if maybe we need to open an issue about, which is the whole topic of um, direct retrieval. Um, so I know there's a lot of uh, the work that's happening in the uh, Helia BitSwap um, module and the sessions work, but I'm wondering, um, just because we had, so we have our public roadmap in the IP Shipyard website, and, uh, you know, in the whole topic that we have there for resilient uh, trustless retrieval for um, for browsers, we're linking to a bunch of issues, but I realize we don't have any issue, an overarching issue for like the direct uh, retrieval from peers. Um, and so I'm wondering if it, it makes sense to write a tracking issue that just kind of describes the general uh, problem uh, in a sort of transport agnostic way, like a, a transfer protocol agnostic way. Yeah, I know, I know there was some work in the delegated routing to, to like use the um, response of, of the router to then fetch content. I think that's working. That That is linked up now, but it's not hooked up for like trustless gateway retrieval. Um, but, but we do like for bit swap, um, I think Alex, when you, when you migrated to the, um, the Helia interface to remove the lib P2P property and then have the, the routers, um, property that, that I, I'm, I think that's linked up. I haven't tested it or looked into it much, but yeah, it would be good to, um, flesh out that full story more. So we had a tracking issue for making sure, you know, trustless gateways or any other block brokers, you know, all block brokers or, uh, or block brokers, the interface is, is set up to support um, checking the responsive routers would be good. Would it be useful to maybe like reframe this from being abstract and protocol agnostic to be very specific? to Helia Service Worker Gateway productization. I feel it's kind of like, it yeah, does not have the, the P2P, step for... right? Right. It's kind of like, uh, it's useful in that it's a, produ it, it, it's a thing that we want there. So what we want there is that uh, if you are, have a thing, not just like hit uh, trustless uh, gateway dot link, but maybe like if you are not able to like retrieve it, if, if trustless gateway dot link or all the hard, like default gateways you have, they were not able to find the content. You should be able to do the delegated routing. Uh, and if there's like slash HTTPS provider, like, there's no reason today uh, the service worker gateway should not be able to like directly connect to that gateway and retrieve the missing block. So uh, my, th that's like a second one I, I'll feel, because I feel that's like, it, it will solve the higher problem by uh, focusing on making this just purely a HTTP as retrieval that works today. And it also helps uh, all the service providers who want to offload uh, data transfer away from like BitSwap. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to look into the routers too much yet. Alex, can you speak to like the work that might be involved with, with uh, hooking, hooking up the routers interface that Helia has uh, to like have like a dynamic list of uh trustless gateway block brokers sorry got a branch that i haven't pushed yet that uses um the routers to create a session uh like just based on http uh trusted or http gateways which sounds a lot cool. like it would do this awesome yeah so if we can get a tracking issue and and um map out kind of what we want to make sure that that's doing for us 
at least in the in the frame of Helio Service Worker Gateway, you know, as as a use case. I think we can move that, that forward. Context, I have a question. It, what um sort of what changes are going to be necessary from a high level to Helia in order to work with uh, gateways that only support, say, car responses? Like I believe the W3 storage one um, doesn't support raw blocks. You can get raw blocks. Say again, Alan? Did you say that you, you can get raw blocks? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it supports both. Okay, so where was that issue that we were looking at before? I think this one. Yeah. Yeah, so there was um, being raw to dag.w3ds.link. And then it said not acceptable. Is it just because of the con the CID that was requested, or why would we get a um, not acceptable for the VNG ILD raw? Did Did you try it with the non trustless gateway? Um, I'll look. I'll look into that. It should be supported. I, I have a feeling that if you tried it with the just w3s.link without the DAG, it, then it might work. I, th I think okay. DAG.w3s.link is designed to be like cars only. I don't think it's meant to be blocks and cars and other. Uh, but yeah, I have a feeling if you just use w3s.link and not DAG, it, it might work. Yeah, the, the problem is that the DAG uh, one is uh, announced uh, on IPNI, not the other one. Yeah. And okay. and so, Lido, I get, I'm guessing like block, blocks from Trustless is is in the spec and then. Yeah, it's like the most basic building block of IPFS, just a single block. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I know. I'm just checking that it's in the trustless gateway and it wasn't just yeah, cars. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it's a must. Okay. The cars are should, I think. <laughs> yeah, I can fix that up. No problem. Yeah. It's also okay to, I don't know, you know, if, if it, for technical reasons you are not able to export like, it on that endpoint, just redirect, like, you know, three or one uh, to the one that. that... <laughs> right. Yeah. Then we got to have a heuristic for, for checking for those redirects. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, yeah, I think I think we're good, guys. And I mean, if we want to chat about anything else, kind of just open open time, or we can exit early. But good discussion, best and good plans for going forward. Has there been any good interest um, at East Denver in some of this stuff? Yeah, people people seem really excited about um, uh, verified fetch. Uh, well, two people that I talked to, and then the service worker gateway has. Like everybody loves the idea of like verifying directly from the end user. Um, um, and speaking, I mean, there's a number of items from that, that, that I think we as the IPFS maintainers need to, you know, make better announcements about like for, for NFT projects, like people hard coding IPFS.io, we need to definitely make an announcement about like that being a bad idea using like IPFS colon slash slash as a minimum or, 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 you know, would be ideal, but then like as a minimum, just the CID and then let whoever's reading that blockchain metadata, like figure out where to get that CID from. Um, but the, the Helio verified fetch, I wrote some notes um, in my ETH Denver notes where I talked to Jordan from the um, ICP internet computer um, and he said that they are working on a fetch library as well. And they are actually 
like um, monkey patching the fetch function that like is available in the browser, which I know <laughs> like is not great, but I think for DX, like his argument was, you know, monkey patching it allows people to like just use fetch as they normally do. And so it works for regular content, but then if they are fetching like ICP content, it, it just works there. So um, how do you, like, I thought that browsers didn't allow you to assign to window anymore. There's, there's uh, like you certain properties you can't overwrite. How are they? How are they monkey patching, or is it just like a fetch that you import from their module? It might be like via pony fill type wrapper thing or proxy. Or right. Like okay. I'm not sure exactly how or or even if that is possible now, but I'm just, um, yeah, just curious. Yeah, I think like with JavaScript, it, it's JavaScript. So what what can't you do? <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> I know, well, I know you right. can't. You can't overwrite yeah. to window like dot crypto. I think that's not allowed everywhere yeah. for reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. Override I thought it was other things crypto. as well. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> for now. <laughs> yeah. So I think I mean it would be would be interesting to provide like a simple library wrapper for people where we just say like, hey, like you can import this pony bill that we're like add, like you then use this method and it works the same as a regular fetch, but also like for IPFS content does the verified fetch thing. Like it could be a good DX opportunity for us, whether we're monkey patching or not, just providing like some sort of um, switch, you know, switch statement library that, you know, calls one or the other. But yeah, um, talk, yeah, yeah. We did the IPFS mainnet yesterday, which was which was pretty interesting. Um, there's some some confusion around IPFS still. I think we all understand, but yeah, general general good sense of verified bet and service worker gateway. And I'll be talking to more people today. It's you know a lot of prep work in the previous three days. All right, guys. And yeah, this was this was fun. Um, yeah, ETH Denver's going on now. Hopefully, hopefully, um, we have some good notes or good good things to talk about after. Hopefully, we can get Daniel to write us a beautiful blog post and uh, you know maybe status update on feedback we got and and different areas where we're going to go in the future.